Hello everyone, this is part 2 of the Sabbath School Efficient PowerPoint tutorial and uh, I just want to uh, substantiate my uh, statements from the Bible and Spirit of Prophecy that I did made in the, in the tutorial number 1 and add uh, more emphasis on things I forgot to add here. So I hope you watch the other one that will help you technically and I want to uh, put more substance onto the things that I said. So why do we teach Sabbath school? Because Jesus said, go and teach all nations. That is red letters. That is from Jesus Christ himself. So when we teach Sabbath school, we are following what Jesus told us to do. And on the other hand, if you're not teaching, I think you should uh, consider obeying because this is the God's uh, command. Furthermore, it says in Revelation 10, 10, 11, 10 is the sweet to the mouth and bitter to the belly. And 10, 11 is, it says, thou must prophesy again. So even if we made theological mistakes before, the Bible says we must prophesy again. So after we study and correct, then to many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Okay. Encouragement for people who made theological mistakes before, like everybody else who else hasn't made mistake, hasn't made a mistake. And of course, First Corinthians 14, 1. Charity, love is good. Spiritual gifts is good. But rather that ye may prophesy. You know, tell that Jesus is coming soon. If you don't repent, you will die. These things are prophecies. They are sure. They are correct. It hasn't happened. Some of them have happened. But that is what the Bible tells us to do. Rather that ye may prophesy. So we have to teach. Therefore, brethren, covet to prophesy. There are many spiritual gifts, but we can follow and learn how to prophesy and to teach all things. To teach because it's a great commission. Wherefore, covet to prophesy when you see people teaching properly. When you see people not teaching properly and you want to teach properly, you want to teach better. When you see people in YouTube become successful and you want to get the gospel and do it that way, help it become, be distributed that way also. Let's fill the internet with God's word. Yeah. It says in Deuteronomy 6, 7, you should teach them when you wake up, when you're sitting in your house, when you're eating, when you're walking on the road. Etc. Okay, why read all the verses? I was telling that, uh, I was saying that I just read the verses because I don't know. I'm not a uh, professional teacher. <laughs> but Jesus came to Nazareth and where he had grown out, he has custom, he went to the synagogue and he stood up and read Luke 4 16. So that's my only uh, simple, simplest way to teach Sabbath school. And is to read, stand up, and read, my friends. No home. Just, it will work because Jesus did it. Okay. Furthermore, if you stand up and then we tell our opinions, our stories, our jokes, and our uh, imaginations, our propositions, and our speech, what will happen? Yeah? One sentence of scripture is of more value than 10,000 of one's ideas. So, we don't want to waste their people, the people's time, on our own opinions. But to make their time more valuable, 10,000 times than our own opinions and arguments and ideas and philosophies. So, it's more important to read what is in the Bible than to tell our own stuff because our we, our ideas are a waste of time compared to one bible verse how can you match one bible verse 10,000 but more value than 10,000 of man's ideas according to 7 testimony page 30 so it is 10,000 times better to read the bible okay how about spiritual prophecy in GY codes because if we say our own opinions, we are not a proven prophet. Ellen White has passed the, pro the tests of the prophet. 
biblical test of the prophet? Us? <laughs> Who cares about? We are nobody. We are nothing. Nobody knows us. So when we have opportunity, let us just point to the truth and use our opportunity. Believe in the Lord your God, so you shall be established. Believe his prophets, yeah. Yes, yeah, so you shall prosper. Another thing that I forgot to write here. When we say our own ideas, and we have not read the Bible, and we have not read the spirit of prophecy, somebody who has read the Bible and the spirit of prophecy will probably find something wrong in what we said that contradicts anything in the Bible or the spirit of prophecy. And we will be subject for reproof because we are ignorant. You can read, but you did not read. So, it is not, ignorance is not, not excuse. So, if you read only what is in the Bible and spirit of prophecy, then you cannot you, the, you cannot uh, make mistake as much. You cannot make that much mistake. Just the interpretation or how you put it together. You also have to pray to God to cut. Uh, truth properly <clears throat> believe his prophet so more reading less mistakes more comments more mistakes yeah. the mistakes most of the people I corrected is because they are making their own imagination mistakes presuppositions and assumptions and then I found in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy that they are wrong so just send an email or send a private message Everybody is subject to the truth. Okay. And that's what we want to do also when we are wrong. Okay. To so reduce the wrong, reduce comments. Okay. Why make the text big? Because the Bible says in Habakkuk to do write the vision and make it plain. Now, plain means something that people can read. If you make PowerPoint that people cannot read, you are wasting your time making it. So make it big. So that many people can read. I mean, many, uh, thousands until they are the back, 2,000 people. And the two thirds of the internet who are reading in their small cell phone. Why make a full lesson? You know, there is an idea going around that the Sabbath school lesson should be just a review. I don't know where it's based from. Please update me if you find the basis. But what I read in the Spirit of Prophecy is that Sabbath school is worthy of long service. Sabbath school should be a place where the jewels of truth are searched for and rescued from the environment of error and placed in the true setting in the framework of the gospel. Precious gems are, are of truth, long lost, because we are just watching other things, are now to be restored to the children of God. The things of justification by faith righteousness of Christ should be presented in our Sabbath school. And the youth and children may understand these important subjects, teachers and scholars. We know the way of salvation. Sacred and eternal principles connected to the plan of salvation have long been lost sight. They must be restored in their proper place. In the plan of the 13th of Revelation, may it appear to their heavenly light and penetrate the moral darkness as the world is enshrouded. You see? Look at this next paragraph. The Lord calls for young men and women to give themselves lifelong earnest labor in the Sabbath school work. So, we should teach Sabbath school while we are alive, lifelong. Spasmodic, I googled what is the spasmodic. Spasmodic efforts will not avail to accomplish much. What is the meaning of spasmodic? According to Google, it is occurring or done in brief. So, if you summarize Sabbath school lesson only, the SOP says, this spasmodic efforts you are making the sabbath school a review center only not a real school will not avail to accomplish much good that's why you see 50 percent of the people are backslid because you summarize the sabbath school people don't understand they backslide okay so sabbath school deserves long time according to concept the sabbath school work at page 12, paragraph 2, according to uh, Prophet Ellen White. So, spasmodic efforts will not avail to accomplish much good. However, I observe that those people who have put many verses in the Sabbath school, they have many views. And those who are 
uh, enthusiastic. Okay, not boring. Or to make you successful laborers in the work of God. You know why people has hey, nobody knows how to do Bible study and the practitioners are low because they are not taught how to. Sabbath school is summarized. Okay. Or to make successful laborers in the work of God. We are we supposed to teach the truth and to teach how to teach the truth. By patient continuance in well-doing, you are to become laborers together with God. You are to reckon yourselves the servants of God by the day. Be diligent in your work for one day and see that you make no crooked path in yours. With less the lane, okay, be turned out to the path of the Jesuit by your misdoings. Testimonies on Sabbath school work, okay. So, Sabbath school deserves long time and spasmodic teaching doesn't work okay. okay let's continue teaching to observe all things yeah all so how can you teach if you don't to teach all things jesus said teaching to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you if you summarize you cannot teach all things I am with you always, I am going to the end of the world. Yeah. Matthew 28, 20, Jesus told us to teach all things, not summary only. Not assignment, but teach. Okay. Avoid backsliding. Matthew 13 is the parable of the sower. The difference between those who are fruitful and those who are backsliders is the understanding of the word. And the solution for understanding the word is to teach and to teach and to teach in, um, until they until we understand it ourselves okay when any of you heareth the word and understand death if not then cometh the wicked man the birds that catches away the one that was sown in the heart matthew 13 19 but those that understand they bear fruit and they bring for hundred fourth hundredfold some 60 some 30 matthew 13 23 and 19 Okay, you understand? There, it is our opportunity to help people understand the word so that they will bear fruit. If they don't understand, the evil one will come and take away the truth. Why put many verses? Then there is an idea also of making your sermon short. I don't know because there is a Bible verse. Many things I have to say and say, but I cannot, you cannot bear them now. But, you see, if you read the Bible, it's many verses. Some people wish the Bible were short, but the Bible is for our, our salvation. Also, I put how many verses do we put? Yeah, only one. If this is true, have you ever heard of the learning pyramid? In the learning pyramid, it says if you are just listening, you remember about 5%. If you are the ones who are teaching and doing it, you remember about 95 or 90 percent so if you report in class you never forget almost your report yeah. i reported i never forget my report if you are teaching you learn the most yeah. if you those of you who are listening only you only remember five percent according if this is if this is true there are people who think this is not true anyway if this is true then people who listen to you get only five percent now, if you are going to teach only five verses, how many five? How are these five percent of five verses? There is not even one verse they will remember. However, if you teach one hundred verses, five percent is five percent. They will remember five, right? You just look at the ratio. So if you they, if you don't teach, if you teach only twenty, they will only remember one verse. If you teach one hundred, they will remember five verses. Then you teach five thousand. So they will remember 100 verses. Okay. So 10 verses. Okay. The more you put, the more they will remember because of the percentage. Yeah. Okay. According to this learning pyramid. Furthermore, <clears throat> some verses are repeated. Some. Why? Sometimes. Why does the Bible repeat things? For emphasis of important things. So that 
if you do not understand it from the other side, at least you will understand it from the other side. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, almost so many same stories. Why do we have to repeat again and again? Yeah, we don't summarize the Bible. The Bible, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. So all of them, all, all, okay, all, understand all. 2 Timothy 3.16 And why should we not be boring people? Yeah. Because people have short attention span. Kids have only few seconds yet. Young people have only few minutes attention span. So we should not waste time of people because people are busy thinking of other things. And time is short. We want to be good stewards of the time. We want to be efficient. And we should not be boring. Yeah. So, time is short. Our forces, we must organize our presentation so that we can do larger work with the same amount of time. Yeah, because our time is short and the work is big. Okay. Because time is short, we should work with diligence and double energy. Let us imagine if you're just teaching 10 people. But if thousands of people are listening to you, let us respect their time. Let's prepare our presentation so that all of their time and attention that they give to us will be worth it. Yeah? People who are studying how to be popular in YouTube, they think, what do people watch? How do people watch? And they study so that it will be a good uh, attraction to the people who, and the people who watch will get what they are looking for. So when we present the gospel, we should also be organized and diligent and energetic, double energy. Yeah. Furthermore, enthusiasm in the things real and imaginary. This is a story read, you can read it from Ellen White writings. On a certain occasion when Peter turned the celebrated actor who was dining with Dr. Shelton, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Archbishop said to him, Pray, Mr. Beretta, tell me why is it that you actors affect your audience so powerfully by speaking of things imaginary. By this is Ellen White's uh, book, Voice in Speech and Song, page 227, paragraph 1. If you want to learn how to speak properly, read VSS, Voice in Speech and Song. And this is the second paragraph. My Lord, replied Peterton, with due submission to your grace, permit me to say that the reason is plain. It all lies in the power of enthusiasm. We on the stage, the actors, speak of things imaginary as if they were real. And you in the pulpit speak of things that are real at, as if they were imaginary. You are boring guy. You are speaking of salvation and salvation and judgment and heaven and hell. But you, we are speaking it like boring people. But those actors, they are speaking of useless things and they are speaking with enthusiasm. So this is what the actor says. You people who are speaking the truth, you are speaking as if what you are telling is not truth. Answers to parents, teachers, and students. Also in voice and speech and so. <clears throat> it says in the book, Evangelism, and also in other book quoted, proportionate to success. Okay. When God opens the way for the accomplishment of a certain work and gives assurance of success to the chosen instrumentality, Instrumentality must do all in his power to bring about the promised God, the promised result. God promised his gospel will be successful. We have to do all of what we can do to make that happen in our effort. In proportion to the enthusiasm, so you have to have energy and excitement. Enthusiasm, yeah, enthus and perseverance. Not only now, but you have to budget your time and the rest and continue persevering teaching Sabbath school with which work is carried forward. It has to be sustainable. That's why I help you try to make your work efficient, easier, so that there will be more perseverance. Yeah, yeah. Let us think how to organize our work so that it consumes less time and energy, <coughs> which we the work will carry, carry it forward. So enthusiasm and perseverance will be the solution to how to carry the work forward. And success will be given. Okay, Christian service, 262 paragraph. <clears throat> now, 
it is important when we teach Sabbath school to pray and repent of our sins before we ask God anything. Why? Because why are we asking if we have not even followed and obeyed and repented of all our sins? Peter said, Repent and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit <coughs> will help us understand all things. He shall teach you all things. That is why we repent. Because that is the sequence in Acts 2. Repent, baptize. We were baptized already. But repent because we sinned again. Repent, give the, receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will be given to us as Jesus promised. And the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. Wow, amazing. Whatsoever Jesus wants us to learn. And we have to depend on God because we do not know the audience what the audience needs. God knows what the audience needs. We do not know what enemy Satan is planning, but God knows what Satan is planning. We do not know the future, but God knows the future. The work is bigger than us. Our mind is like this only, but the work is big. We do not understand the whole work, but if we depend on God, God will lead us. The great controversy is too complicated for us, yeah, of course. Great powers, and we are just small people, <coughs> not knowing what to do. So we totally depend on God. We need God's leading where to efficiently spend our limited time. We have to understand we have limited time, we have limited energy. That's why we become irritable sometimes after we have made so much PowerPoint and then we have limited attention span. Our audience also has limited attention span. We have to put the word of God in that limited attention span so that we will be tired of listening to TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, other useless things <coughs> that are there. 99% of the things are bad. <laughs> and limited attitude also and time. So that is uh, God. We totally depend on God how to manage all of those things yeah so i hope it helps my friends let us all fill the internet with god's word 